fight Oscar Valdez. And the twist now is that um, Oscar Valdez, he wants to fight Emmanuel Navarrete. And the twist is that Navarrete is, oh, there's Zanicia. Everybody, let me introduce Hi. the Hi. division champion, Zanicia Estrada. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Sorry I'm late. I had a little bit of trouble signing in. No problem. So uh, one of the main reasons I wanted to get you on is because I know that you've been pursuing champions for from for two, for two divisions, basically, minimum weight and light flyweight, but none of them seem to want to take the fight. So I wanted you to just uh, uh, characterize that for me and let everybody know what's going on. Yeah, so I've been trying to get unification fights and like, it's difficult because not only the fighters, it's not only the fighters who don't want to take them, but it's the organizations that aren't doing their job by forcing, by forcing the fights to happen and forcing the fighters to um, take these fights that are mandatory as far as um, not just at 105, but 108 as well. Um, like Senia Gomez, I've been wanting to fight her for the past couple of years already. And um, the WBC seems to force all other fights to happen but because i mean it's, it's all politics you know at the end of the day it sucks because because wbc is friends with her promoter and that's really the, that's the truth honestly being friends with the wbc you have them on their side and they're not forcing yesenia to fight me when i was the wbc silver champion i should have been mandatory for yesenia to fight next but that still hasn't happened and now i'm not the wbc um silver belt champion anymore now kim cavall is and they took that from me without even informing me or telling me anything not even asking if i would like to you know uh defend it or or still fight for it obviously because they don't want me fighting yesenio gomez yet mm. so which is great for kim you know good for her um i know they're fighting the day before my fight i believe uh december 17th but um you know that it just sucks that i could not get that unification fight with Yusenia Gomez. So um, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because I, I saw uh, it's like, and, and I agree with everything you said, because I've seen it like Kenya Enriquez, she's been interim champion for a million years. They don't order the fight, but here we see Yesenia. She's going to Canada. She's going to fight Kim Clavel. And I'm thinking, well, why are you okay to go to Canada to fight Kim? But you weren't okay to fight Kenya who's in Mexico and you're not okay to fight Sinicia, who's a champion in your division. And before that, she was the silver champion. Why do you think Yesenia is okay to fight with Kim and not you? Um, I think because she thinks that the fight with me is more of a risk. And her promoter even said that himself. Um, I mean, and I think Kim is a very good fighter. I like Kim a lot. But um, I think in Yesenia Gomez's mind and in her promoter's mind, they think the fight with me is a lot tougher and more of a risk of them losing. Uh, so that's definitely why they didn't want to take the fight with me. And, mm. um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see who comes out with the victory, but no matter whether it's Yesenia or Kim, um, I would definitely like to face uh, either one of them. Do you feel that if Kim wins the fight that you're more likely to get the fight with Kim than Yesenia? Oh yeah, for sure. Cause it seems like Kim is more willing to, to, to step up and, and, and fight, you know, um, she's, she's fighting Yesenia Gomez. I don't think she really is is afraid to take any challenges so i think the fight with kim is that de will definitely happen quicker if she wins than than it did with me you know having the chance to fight yesenia and what about um wba light flyweight champion of argentina jessica bop we saw you know two fights ago she loses a fight at super bantamweight but she's still champion at light flyweight she beats a girl in Colombia called uh, Def something Zuniga. I, I saw it, and it was a good fight. Like, she knocked her out. She looked all right. Is that still a fight that you're interested in? Um, I mean, I'm so confused about that, too, just because the WBA, like, she she was inactive for such a long for such a long time, and then she decided she wants to go to the Olympics. So she was inactive. She tried to go to the Olympics, and then – um. I believe uh, somebody from Mexico, I forgot her name, but she ended up fighting for the WBA world title. So now they promoted Jessica Bop to super champion, which like, it makes no sense. Like these organizations are just like, are, are, are ridiculous. And, and that drives me crazy because 
somebody like me who wants to fight the best and wants these fights and wants these world titles can't get them because the organizations are not following the rules. They're breaking their own rules. The fighters are okay with just fighting girls who aren't ranked, defending their titles against girls that aren't ranked. And it's just a big mess. And I think, um, I think it's, it's, they think they can get away with it because a lot of women, the women's boxing hasn't been where it's at now. And with fighters like myself and fighters like Michaela Mayer and other top women who, you know, they, they want to leave a legacy. They want to be great. They want to fight best and have these world titles. Nobody was ever speaking up about it, but now we're speaking up about it because, you know, we're, we're to the point where it's upsetting to us and it's kind of like derailing the path in our career and what we want to do. So now that we're speaking up about it, I think it forces these organizations to, to make these fights happen and make them mandatory and um, give us the fights that we want. Mm -hmm. Willie Lynch says, is it safe to say that these girls are afraid to lose to you or is it a money issue why they don't want to fight you? I think it's definitely just they, they don't want to lose. They don't want to lose their bout. They want to hold on to their bout for as long as possible. Money is not the issue because right now fighting me will be the biggest payday for any female fighter in, in or around my division. So money's not the issue. So it's, it's funny how like when we offer these fights and we offer a, a, the best payday these girls are going to make in their entire career facing me and to hear them still say no or still have an excuse to not fight me, that, then that's when you know, okay, it's more than that. It's, it's just they, they're afraid to take the fight or they, they just want to try to hold on to their belt for as long as possible. And, and I saw that um, at least uh, it was my understanding that you guys were looking at uh, Japan's own Itsuko Tada, who's WBO champion at minimum weight. But I, I saw something about Itsuko saying, oh, she has a mandatory. She goes to, I believe it was Vietnam. She Vietnam. loses her belt out there. So it's like she kind of shot herself in the foot because had she fought you, there wouldn't have been no shame if she lost. But she lost her belt to some girl out there. She actually got robbed, to be honest, because... It looked like she won the fight, but they gave it to the other girl. So now she doesn't have the WBO anymore, and, and she's just it, and that's it for her. Yocasta Valle, who I also wanted to talk to you about, she's with Marv Nation. She was very recently in uh, California. She called you out by name because I saw the video where she was like, Oh, ella vino pa pelear con Cenice Estrada, que si ella quiere pelear, yo estoy aquí. But then she announced the fight with someone else. Talk to everybody about that. <laughs> yeah, I was a little confused with that too, but but yeah, as you were saying first, um, Suko Tara went to Vietnam and ended up losing, and I was hoping to fight her, but now she's not champion anymore. She's out, so looks like I'll be going for the girl, who, I'll be trying to face the girl um, who who defeated her, who's now the new champion. Um, and like you said, you know, no no shame in losing to me. At least you know you'll get a, a big payday doing it, um, but. Now the looks like the girl from Vietnam is is in the mix now. And as far as um your Costa Valle, um yeah, like she says that she was she called me out to fight me, which uh you know, which is not true because I've we've been trying to get the fight with her even before she was with Marv Nation. Uh, but now that she's with Marv Nation, you know now they're 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 from here. They're from the U.S. So they're they're trying to make it happen. So um they've been in contact with our matchmaker Robert Diaz and um they came to terms in an agreement and I was supposed to fight her in December, well, November 27th. But since that whole card fell through, the dates kept changing. Um, and then they had said, announced um, on social media that she was going to fight in Pomona versus somebody else. And then we had to call them up and say, Hey, what happened? I thought we were going to face each other. Um, so that was kind of a little bit confusing. And then um, for my upcoming fight, December 18th, um, just because of the change of so the the too many changes in dates and the budget for the fight and the and the fight card, um, we weren't able to face each other. So I'll, that's why I'm defending my WBA world title. But we already have the fight set for my first fight of 2022. Will be with Yokosuka Valle for unification fight at 105. So that's already set. So I'm happy for I'm happy about that. So this fight in December 18th, I'm just going to go in there, stay busy, defend my world title against a fighter who's. 9 know with five knockouts. She's uh, originally from Guatemala, but she trains in Mexico. I believe she only had one fight in Guatemala, and all of her fights are in Mexico because her promoter is a Mexican promoter. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to fighting her. I know she's a 
she's ranked, I believe, um, at 105 in like top 10 or something like that. Okay, okay. Rich Mendez says, keep it going. Napoli asks, cheers to you, Senecia, on your pursuit of greatness. Question, if push came to shove, would you consider moving up to fight 112-pound champions as far as a rematch now that she has a belt there? Thank you. And, um, yes, I definitely want to fight. My goal is to have all the bouts at 105, 108, and also at 112. And I moved up the first time to fight as far as at 112 because she would not come down to face me at 108. So um, because I wanted to make the fight happen so bad because I wanted to beat her so badly, I said, okay, I'll fight, I'll fight you at 112. So what I think is what I think would be fair is if in a for a rematch she comes down to 108 and fights me up my weight class since I went up the first time but you know I don't I I highly doubt she would want to do that um I mean I feel like she has a lot of weight she can lose she can easily make 108 but she just refuses to do it um but that would be the fair thing to do but with her it will probably be very difficult because she's a very difficult person to deal with so maybe we can meet <laughs> at like 109 and still fight for the 112 pound bouts. So, I mean, I want to get her to go as low as possible because I took I, I took all the risks in the first fight and I still beat her. So, but yeah, I definitely want to rematch and um, I, I, uh, I can't wait till that happens. I know it'll happen. Uh, Willie Lynch says, which fight in your career would you say was your best performance? Love the bout with Tsunami. I did not expect you to have such high punch volume. Thank you. Um, so I would say my best performance is probably beating Annabelle Ortiz for the 105 pound WBA world title. Um, felt great in that fight. You know, she's a very legit champion who had the title for nine years. Um, you know, dropped her in the second round and I knew she would, she was just going to keep coming the whole fight, but I felt like I used my game plan very well to make her feel uncomfortable and, and showed her something that she's never seen before. And then my fight with Tsunami, um, a lot of people don't know this. You know, I never, I didn't really speak about it after the fight. I think I said it in a couple of interviews, but um, I felt like shit in the Tsunami fight. <laughs> like I, I, I overtrained, I over, overtrained and oversparred, and that was my first time ever feeling like that. So I never really, I did, I never really like believed the whole overtraining and oversparring thing. And my trainer. And dad, they're always reminding me like, hey, hey, slow down in training, slow down in training, because I always want to do more and more and more. And, uh, you know, they're like, no, we don't want you to overtrain. You know, you're you're fine. You're looking good. You're looking sharp. But in this fight, I th for the tsunami training camp, I think it was because I just got out of a training camp for the first world title right back into another one. And my body just never really recovered. And, and I was just always tired during the whole training camp. So going into the first round with Tsunami, I was completely exhausted from the first round, like the first 30 seconds of the fight. So in that fight, like, you know, even though you said I had high punch volume, like I was dying, though. Um, <laughs> I guess I just have a good poker face and a good way of hiding it. But uh, that definitely was a tough fight for me to get through. Um, and, you know, luckily I, I, I did. And um, but yeah, so now I'm just I'm taking it, taking it easy and just pacing myself as far as like how hard I train and separating my sparring sessions. That way I don't overtrain for a fight again. Oh, and how do you evaluate Marlene's chances? I was surprised when I saw she's fighting Annabelle Ortiz also on the same card that you're fighting. How do you evaluate Marlene's chances against Annabelle? Because I saw how people reacted to the Ibeth Zamora Silva fight, which was for the WBC title, I believe the one that she won. And there were a lot of people that felt uh, uh, Marlene didn't win that fight. And he said she got dropped in the first round. Uh, that it Beth threw with more volume, she threw more punches, and now I'm looking at the Annabelle Ortiz fight, and I'm like, well, how's she going to do against Annabelle? How do you think uh, Madeleine will do against Annabelle? I think she can beat Annabelle if she just boxes the whole time, boxes and moves, um, and not stand in front of Annabelle. But Annabelle is 105 pounds. She's, you know, she's not a flyweight. But, you know, I think Marlon should just pick on someone her own size. I don't know why she's uh, facing Annabelle Ortiz, who's such a small fighter. But at the same time, Marlon does not have any power. So she won't hurt Annabelle. So I feel like Annabelle will keep coming forward and keep throwing punches. And if Marlon is right there to, to take the shots, Annabelle's, Annabelle's going to keep hitting her and keep coming. Um, so I would say, you know, Marlon would have to just 
use her boxing skills and 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 move to keep Annabelle to keep Annabelle off. Yeah, because I saw you know there's still there's you you have a belt in that division. There's Jessica Bob, and and I'm like, well, why didn't Marlene opt to unify? You know, because there's there's champions out there. You know, what I mean, and she's not unifying. She's fighting Annabelle, and like, well, Annabelle's from 105. Why are you fighting her? You know, it's just <laughs> yeah. Just kind of threw me off. Like, why are you fighting her? Like, there's De- Deborah N.A. Lopez of uh, Argentina. I believe she has the WBO. And there's you. No, you have the WBO. Deborah, ha- Deborah has the IBF, I think it is. Y después Jessica tiene the WBA. So I'm like, well, why didn't you pick one of them? Is- yeah, I don't know. I didn't under- I don't understand that either. But, hey, we'll, we'll see. I'm uh, uh, I'm Team Ortiz on this fight. Ortiz, <laughs> I'll be cheering go- for her in the dressing room. <laughs> so I take it that you and Marlena are still not cool at all in any capacity oh no we're, we're still not cool i know she she just did an interview the other day um for our press conf our virtual press conference for our december 18th fight and um she had said that you know there's no more beef and that the beef is squashed and that um that her and her team you know tried to talk to me and and invite me into the elevator with them and into dinner. And I was like, what? I, that, that, that never happened. And the beef is still there with me. I don't know what she's talking about. I think, you know, she just doesn't, she just doesn't want it anymore. She doesn't want the beef. I think the first time it just like broke her down mentally and she doesn't want to deal with any of any of that anymore, especially going into a rematch with me, if that does happen. Um, But no, the beef is still there. I mean, for me, she's just somebody that I'll, I'll never, I'll never like, and I'll never, you know, really be cool with. I just can't ever picture it. So I have to ask, what is it about Marlene that people don't, because it's not just you. It's also Ava Knight. Ava Knight doesn't, and I'm like, yo, they got like a long standing that goes back years that they got to be from. What is it about her? Yeah. I mean, yeah, she has a history of just getting on people's nerves and just being a B-I-T-C-H, you know, uh, it was <laughs> Ava Knight, Kalisha West, uh, Clarissa Shields, Michaela Mayer, like she just has a, a track record of just of just women who just don't like her and she just can't get along with people. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just her her personality, you know. And uh, we're we're two totally different types of people. So uh, j- because of that, we would never really see eye to eye or get along. All right. A uh, pull check asks, which division would you like most to become undisputed at? Um, I would say either, either 105 or 108, mm-hmm. either division, I'll, I'll be happy being undisputed at. But like I said, my goal is to be undisputed at both of those weight classes. Okay. Uh, now, before I let you go, I just want to pick your brain. Uh, there's a big fight this weekend. Well, there's, there's several fights. Kaylee Reese is fighting Jessica Kamara, but the fight that is on everybody's brain is Crawford Porter. What do you imagine happens in that fight? Um, I think, um, I'm taking Crawford, you know, I think he can, he, he's a taller fighter. He could box well. And, um, I think that will get him the victory for sure. But Porter's a good fighter who just, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't stop throwing punches. Um, and I've seen him kind of get better through each fight, even fights that he's, that he's lost that have been, you know, close. Like the Thurman fight was a very good fight. Um, but I think um, Crawford has the the distance, the length, and the boxing ability to just um, outbox Sean Porter. All right. One. Uh, uh, this is a question that, as of last week, it's on everybody's mind. Everybody's talking about it. I'm going to assume that you saw Alicia Boom- Baumgartner knock out Terry Harper, right? I did, so, yes. So who do you think wins now, Alicia or Michaela? Alicia or Michaela? Um, That'll be a very good fight. You know, um, I haven't really seen mon- much of um, Alicia. So I'm not really, you know, sure what else she can do besides, you know, what I've s- the small clips that I've seen of her. Um, she seems like she's a good fighter. But, um, you know, I've known Michaela for a while and I've seen lots of her fights. And I was actually at her last fight. So um, I think, um, you know, Michaela has that height and reach and I feel like if she can use that effectively then there's I think she'll be undisputed at her division and she'll take all the bouts but um but like I said I haven't really seen much of uh Alicia but um 
yeah, that's a really good division for 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 women. Um, I think it's an exciting division. So I'm looking forward to see who uh, becomes undisputed at that weight class. Lastly, what do you think about Canelo Alvarez going all the way up there to Crucero? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people at 160, 168. They're all upset. They're mad. The guys at 175 don't seem to be complaining that much. It's mostly the guys at 168, right. 160. What do you think about the move? I mean, the Charlos have not made anything happen or made a, made a move to fight Canelo, so... I mean, I, I'm sure that's frustrating for Canelo because he wants to fight the best. He wants to fight them. Um, I think Benavides will be the biggest challenge and toughest challenge for Canelo. I like Benavides a lot. So I'm looking forward to seeing that fight happen when it does happen. Um, and as far as him moving up, uh, I think uh, I've never heard of the guy he's fighting up until <laughs> now. <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, I haven't seen him yet, but because I've never heard of him or seen him, um guessing Canelo is going to win that fight, even though he's the way smaller fighter and um, lighter fighter. Um, Canelo's just, he's, he's the best right now, best in boxing. And I feel like if he, you know, picks, picks and chooses the fights wisely at heavier weight classes, he can still win. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen, I actually heard of the guy a few years, the guy he's fighting. He's, he's actually, he's not bad for his weight, but obviously he's not Canelo, you know what I mean? Canelo. Yeah, yeah. Canelo. Canelo's on a whole different level, so. Oh, Daniel Rios asks, have you ever sparred Danny Trejo? <laughs> I have not sparred with Danny, no. Um, kind of, I'm kind of afraid to spar with Danny. I don't think I would want to. Danny, he, uh, he, he's a very, he's a very good fighter. You know, he started fighting in prison, actually. Um, and then he started his acting career by doing his first role as a, as a fighter. So Danny's a huge boxing fan. He loves boxing. He's so supportive of me. And, um, yeah, I would not want to get in the ring with Danny Trejo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sinisi, I know you're a very busy woman. Thank you very much for your time. Look forward to speaking to you some other time. Best wishes on your fight and congratulations. Oh, one more question. Do you see anyone in your weight class that will be a challenge in the future? Um, I think it froze. Oh, yeah, I think it froze, guys. Uh, might have to just leave it right there. Um, well, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a lot of fun. Sinisi froze. The, the screen is literally frozen. Uh, if Sinisi is listening, thank her very much for her time. I want to thank you very much for your time. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, remember, I'll be going over to Lady Chen's channel after this um, to do a uh, live with her. Uh, and, and we're going to end it here.